after having casual sex with them? Well, no, not always. Uh, most liberated adults have copulated with somebody who they had uh, uh, never fell in love with. As a matter of fact, one night stand, uh, people will go off to try to sleep with somebody in order to trigger this brain system uh, for romantic love. And it doesn't always happen. Nevertheless, it certainly can happen. And the reason is that any kind of genital stimulation drives up dopamine in the brain and dopamine will trigger feelings of romantic love. Um, not only does having sex with somebody sometimes trigger romantic love, but it can also trigger deep feelings of attachment to somebody because with orgasm, there's a real flood of oxytocin and vasopressin, the chemicals associated with attachment. So one of the things I say to people is, I don't care who sleeps with who, uh, I'm not a moralist, but um, uh, I do recommend that if you um, don't copulate with somebody who you don't want to fall in love with, because indeed it can happen in the brain. You can feel deep attachment or mad romantic love for somebody who you had no intention of falling in love with, simply because these three brain systems are interconnected. They're not always connected though, as a matter of fact, um, they can operate very independently. You can feel deep attachment to one person while you feel intense romantic love for somebody else, while you feel the sex drive for a whole range of people. In fact, we're capable of loving more than one person at a time. In fact, you can lie in bed at night and um, swing from feelings of deep attachment for one person to feelings of wild infatuation for somebody else. Uh, there's a committee meeting going on in your head as you swing from one brain system to another. Plato once said, when the mind is thinking, it's talking to itself. You couldn't do this if indeed these three brain systems weren't sometimes um, connected and interconnected and, and, and less connected. So I've hypothesized that we evolved these three brain systems to be connected with each other so that we could be driven to go out and search for sex, fall in love, form a pair bond, and rear our children as a team. And that these three brain systems became somewhat unconnected from each other so that millions of years ago, our ancestors could form a pair bond with one individual and also have what anthropologists politely call EPCs, or extra pair copulations, with other people. Um, thereby, males would have more um, children with extra lovers, and women would acquire more resources for the children that they got, uh, already have. So, we've evolved, I think, what I call a dual reproductive strategy, a tremendous drive to pair up and rear our children as a team, a restlessness in long relationships, a tendency to adultery and divorce and remarriage. We're not puppets on a string of DNA, of course. Uh, we make decisions in our lives. The whole evolution of the cortex is associated with making decisions, with overriding our biology. I'm just simply saying that we've inherited a human nature of conflicting drives, drives that bring us both great joy and great sorrow. So I want to go through some of the characteristics of romantic love and then on into what we found in the brain, why love is an addiction, and why you fall in love with one person rather than another. The first thing that happens when you fall in love is a person takes on what I call special meaning. As one man said to me, he said, the world had a new center and that center was Mary Ann. George Bernard Shaw said it differently. He said, love consists of overestimating the differences between one woman and another. And indeed, we do. And then you focus on this person. You can list what you, before I put these people into my MRI machine, I would ask them what they do not like about their sweetheart. And they could tell me what they didn't like about their sweetheart, but then they swept to the side and just focused on what they did like about them. And this person's car in the parking lot is different from every other car. Uh, the computer they work on, the blog that they write, every single thing about this person is different and special. You also feel intense energy 
uh, when you're madly in love? As one man in the South Sea said, I, I felt like jumping in the sky. You walk all night to talk till dawn. Um, a tremendous euphoria uh, when things are going well. Uh, very much like the experience of cocaine. As a matter of fact, in the brain, we found activity in exactly the same brain region that becomes active when you feel the rush of cocaine. The real difference, many differences between cocaine and romantic love, the, the, one of the big ones is that cocaine wears off. Uh, romantic love uh, can last for months or years. Real mood swings into uh, despair when things are going poorly. Um, intense uh, bodily reactions. Uh, we call it the sweaty palm syndrome. That's probably norepinephrine. The pounding heart, the sweaty palms, the dry mouth. It's sort of a bad deal, you know. Uh, the very moment you want to be, you're most wonderful. Uh, you're around somebody that you uh, want to impress and fall in love with, and, and uh, uh, you're overcome with um, the inability to talk or even walk at times. Um, real emotional dependency on this individual, as um, Walt Whitman said, he said, oh, I would stake all for you, and indeed, you will. Uh, the last question that I asked people before I put them in the machine was, um, would you die for him or her? And they would say yes. They would say yes um, as if I'd asked them to pass the salt. They were really, uh, these, uh, when you're madly in love, you will do anything, just about anything, uh, to win a person. Uh, adversity heightens the attraction. As the Roman poet said, he said, uh, the less my hope, the hotter my love. The more the person uh, doesn't call back, doesn't email, doesn't respond, the more you like them, you now understand what's going on in the brain. Um, uh, it's called um, uh, separation anxiety and a term I call frustration attraction. You become extremely sexually possessive of the person. In science, it's called mate guardian. Uh, in fact, I would guess that uh, the vast majority of all of our worldwide crimes of passion, uh, homicide, uh, suicide, uh, clinical depression, uh, stalking, uh, comes from this primal uh, craving to possess uh, the person that you're in love with. You know, if you're just casually sleeping with somebody, you don't really care if they are uh, sleeping with somebody else, but you become very sexually possessive uh, when you are in love. But the three main characteristics of romantic love are craving for emotional union. First of all, you know, you, you can, um, <clears throat> you want to sleep with the person that you're in love with, but what you really want them to do is to call, to write, to invite you out, um, to, uh, to love you back. Uh, you're highly motivated to win this person. What people around the world will do in order to win romantic love is staggering. And the most important characteristic of romantic love is obsessive thinking. The first question I would ask people before I put them in the machine is, um, how long have you been in love? It had to be short. These machines are very expensive. Uh, it's very time consuming to put someone in the machine. I wanted to catch them in our first experiment when they were just falling in love. But the most important question that I ask always is what percentage of the day and night do you think about your sweetheart? Uh, because um, when it is an obsession, there is somebody camping out in your head. And last but not least, romantic love is involuntary. As Stendhal once said, he said, um, love is like a fever. It comes and goes quite independently of the will. And indeed, it does.